Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio, and I'm real glad that you could join us for another segment. We're going to be speaking with Dr. Angelo Stergio this morning, president and CEO of Cellus Life Sciences Group. He's joining us on the program to talk about their phase three lead asset known as GPS. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Stergio. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you, Neil. Great uh, uh, being on, uh, on your show. Well, um, give our listeners a bit of your uh, background. Um, tell us about yourself and, and what led you to uh, found Cellus and when did you found the company? Yeah, uh, um, so I'm a physician by training, uh, but have been in the biotechnology space um, for the last 20 some years. And uh, um, it's really um, a great passion of mine. And particularly over the last 15 years, I've been working in the immunotherapy and cancer vaccine field. Um, when I founded Cellus about um, 11, 12 years ago, I really wanted to make sure, Neil, that we develop an immunotherapy that is highly innovative, uh, can be used alone as a monotherapy, but can also be combined with other drugs uh, and um, is easy and safe to administer. Uh, it really goes after the cancer cells in a smart way and can potentially save patients' lives. So due to my previous work in, in cancer vaccine that I had done, I reached out to um, actually David Scheinberg, um, who um, is a former chief of leukemia at Memorial Sloan Kettering and um, heads the experimental therapeutics division there now. And he's a professor at Memorial Sloan. And, you know, we were able to strike a collaboration um, and for us to then license our lead asset, GPS or Galim Pepimotes, as you, um, mm-hmm. as you alluded to. So really... Um, as I said, over the last um, 20 years, been biotech, and really my passion is um, the, the, the medical piece, research, and, and also the entrepreneurial um, business um, aspect of things. And of course, with a drive to hopefully um, save patients' lives and prolong, uh, prolong life. You mentioned a compound that could be used both uh, as a monotherapy and in combination with other uh, drugs. What is GPS, and how does it accomplish that end? Yeah, I think that's an excellent question. Um, so GPS, as, 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 as background, it targets the number one ranked cancer antigen by the National Cancer Institute, which is Wilms Tumor 1. Wilms Tumor 1, interestingly, it's a fetal oncoprotein um, that functions as a nuclear transcription factor. And, and it's a true oncogene, which is not druggable with standard pharmacologic approaches such as small molecules or antibodies. So as a fetal oncoprotein, and so to put it sort of in, in, in more lame terms, in the fetal state, it's responsible for kidney formation, among other functions it has. And once we're born, it disappears, and then it comes back again when it causes cancer. So it's a validated target. As I mentioned, the NCI ranked it as a number one uh, uh, tumor antigen to go after, and it's overexpressed in about 20 tumor types. So, so what GPS is, it's a mixture of engineered and artificially mutated peptides that utilize what's called heterocytic technology, and we address 25 WT1 or Wilms tumor 1 optimally selected epitopes. And we elicit the CD4 and CD8 immune response across the majority of HLA types and and, and many tumor types. So in other words, um, if somebody has a cancer, for example, the first thing that that happens in your immune system typically is that you mount a CD8 response, a cytotoxic immune response. The problem um, with drugs that um, are administered like immunotherapies or cancer vaccines to patients is that um, many of them have a short-lived CD8 response, and that's typical for, 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 for that. So unless you have helper and memory CD4 cells to keep sort of the CD8 cells going, and also for the CD4 uh, um, cells to do work, it's going to be very difficult to, um, to combat the cancer. So with our technology that I mentioned, we elicit CD4 and, and CD8. And, uh, um, you know, because we have this by design mutation in the sequences of our drug, it makes it even more potent. So it's more immunogenic, but it also helps to overcome tolerance, um, uh, which allows treatment over a potentially long period of time 
through the administration, administration of booster inoculations. So Neil, as a, as a monotherapy, we go after patients who are in remission. So once a patient, for example, in acute myeloid leukemia, because that's um, uh, an indication where we're now in pivotal phase three study, um, in, in acute myeloid leukemia, patients ordinarily can get into remission with chemotherapy uh, 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 and potentially other drugs. The problem is that the vast majority of the patients at some point will relapse, and that's true for many types of cancers. So um, what we basically do as a monotherapy, such as in leukemia, once the patients are in remission, we administer our GPS, which is a subcutaneous injection, similarly to a flu shot, if you will. Uh, the side effects are similarly to a flu shot. So you get a you know, sore arm mm -hmm. and uh, you may feel a little fatigued for a few hours, but that's basically it. You, you go back to, uh, to work and so forth. We treat patients every other week for four months and then we do um, uh, monthly and quarterly booster injections. So in the, as a monotherapy again, once mm -hmm. patients are in remission, we administer GPS. And what we basically do is we provide the picture to the immune system what the cancerous cells look like. So if and when the cancer cells come back, your immune system now through the administration of, of GPS, they know what they look like and they mount an immune response, the CD4 and CD8 immune response that I mentioned before, to fight the cancers and to allow patients to remain in longer remission. Now. Uh, in, in other indications where we combine our drug, for example, with, um, with what is called um, a, a PD-1, uh, for instance, you know, it's drugs like pembrolizumab, Keytruda, or nivolumab, um, uh, or Obdivo, for instance. Um, what, what we have seen is that, that, that we, we have really shown um, a synergy because um, we can now go frontline, so we can go um, jointly with the PD-1 drugs, for instance, to debulk disease because the tumor microenvironment is actually very important. And uh, um, we can then direct the T cells specifically towards the WT1 um, uh, target to not only then debulk disease, but, but in effect also allow for patients to, um, to remain in, 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 in prolonged remission. So again, as a monotherapy, we go after patients in remission if we combine it with other immune oncology drugs such as uh, the PD-1s uh, um, and PD-L1s, we, um, we can go frontline as well as in the maintenance setting. It's as effective in blood-borne, as you said, leukemia as well as solid tumor situations? That's, that's accurate. And so we have done studies in um, acute myeloid leukemia. And the initial work was done at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. And what, what we have seen... In, in patients who achieve what is called first remission and also in patients who achieve second remission. So in other words, the patients undergo a round of chemo to get into the first remission. And in those patients, when we administered our drug GPS, the median overall survival was about 35 months for those patients. And that compares to about 12 to 18 months with best available therapy. And then we did a study, Neil, in patients in second remission. And those patients typically, and unfortunately, the median overall survival is somewhere between five to six months. Mm. And in our study, we actually showed the administration of GPS, we showed a 21-month median overall survival. And that is the indication that we're currently in phase three. Uh, um, and, um, you know, we're very hopeful that we're going to have, um, um, you know, good data by sometime next year. Talk a little bit about what you see uh, as the future for Cellus and uh, give us a website where we can learn more. Yeah, so the website is www.cellaslifesciences, S-E-L-L-A-S, life sciences, one word, dot com. So I think what's going to be exciting is obviously um, uh, that by first half of next year, we're going to have the interim data in our acute myeloid leukemia study. But we also have a collaboration with Merck where we are doing a study in ovarian cancer and we expect data in the first half of this year. And we also have a study in mesothelioma um, in partnership with Bristol Myers Squibb and Memorial Sloan Kettering where we also expect the first initial data in the first half of this year. 
including some other milestones that we expect uh, um, uh, this calendar year. So I think it's very exciting. We have a very strong scientific advisory board, really with eminent pioneers in the field of cancer immunotherapy. And um, we collectively with them and our team here work tirelessly to um, hopefully get this to the finish line and to uh, help patients indeed uh, um, benefit from a treatment that is safe and efficacious, hopefully. Dr. Stergio, thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Great pleasure, Neil. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Angelo Stergio, President and CEO of Cellus Life Sciences Group. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download it SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.